little there, Kate. Okay? Yeah. Owner Wendy and her family have grave concerns about one of the little girl kittens, Amari. Normally in a vet clinic, the earliest you ever see a cat is at around six or maybe even eight weeks of age. To see these little kittens so young, it's very much out of the ordinary. So, what's happened? Because these guys are, have only just been born. Right? Yes, they have. Um, one was the last one that came out. Um, she's come out with a twisted leg, which I'm really concerned about. When Wendy first brings this kitten out, I look at its legs and straight away know whatever it has, it's serious. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Essentially, if you look at this leg here, at the base, it, it bends up, which is kind of like her ankle joints. Yeah. And here, it goes the opposite way. Yeah. The clearest way of putting it is that if Amari was a person, she'd be able to bend her foot right around and actually scratch the back of her calf muscle with her toes. That's pretty scary. But she was born this way, wasn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I had tears streaming down my eyes looking at it. People have told you that she should be put down. Quite a few vets around my area said they should, you should euthanize her straight away. I refuse to be because I love, love the cats. Um, no, I'll do no matter what to save her. I'll do what I can. Mm. I mean, it's obviously a pretty dramatic yeah. issue that she has. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is trying to examine baby kitten Amari under the watchful eye of Mum Scarlett. Is this okay by you, Mum? <laughs> you can take it back, are you? <laughs> no? It's all right. Good okay, girl, Scarlett. In all honesty, my big concern at the moment is looking at that leg. Maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. What I want to do is have a look over her right now and just check there are no other little problems because quite often if you have a deformity, you can have other issues there as well. We'll just have a look on the roof of her mouth just to check there are no holes there. A classic location for a genetic abnormality is a cleft palate. So it's important to look inside the mouth. It's actually pretty smooth in there. Yeah. Let me just have a little listen to her chest. Thankfully though, listening to Amari's heart, the beats sound clear and crisp. There's one thing we don't need to check, and that's her little voice box. <laughs> that is fine. Yes, that's good. It's working perfectly, isn't it? After doing a full physical examination on Amari, I'm more confident that what we're looking at isn't a genetic abnormality, but I can't be sure. The only way to be sure is with an x-ray. We'll be back, and then um, I can work out a plan. Yep, excellent. Let's close our fingers, eh? Basically, every vet says that she's got no hope, so I'm really hoping Dr. Chris has an answer for me and we can save Amari's life. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris needs to x-ray tiny, squirming, three-day-old Amari. She's going to keep on crawling away. OK, so this doesn't look great, but it's often the best way to keep a kitten that's moving from giving us a blurry image on an x-ray. I'm sorry, Amari, this is not what you want, but yes, I've taped you down now. My real hope is that Amari's problem is purely as a result of her being in the womb and being compressed up one end and never having a chance to really stretch that leg out. X-ray! The x-ray will tell me though if this problem is actually the cause of a serious bone deformity. If that's the case, this issue will not be easy to fix. So you can see this is the normal leg here and that's the femur coming down to the tibia and fibula. But when we go to the problem leg, we go femur, tibia, fibula, but then it takes this massive deviation out to the side. We've got tendons, we've got ligaments. We've got muscles that have tightened up and twisted and, and essentially locked that leg into the wrong position. Good girl. Yeah. Owner Wendy is anxiously waiting to hear what Chris has discovered. It'll be heartbreaking to see a bad outcome. I'm really hoping for a good outcome. 
So, I've had a good look at the x-rays. Yeah. So what we're dealing with is a purely soft tissue problem. So <laughs> it is something that's just in the tendons, mm -hmm. in the ligaments, in the muscles. Yeah. What we're looking at is something that has probably occurred during her pregnancy. Yeah, so she's been squished up yeah. or so forth, but then yeah. hers not be able to stretch out. Yeah, so she's got essentially what we call twisted leg syndrome. Yep. It's very rare. It occurs in very few kittens, but when it does happen, thankfully, there is something you can do about it. From what I can tell in the x-rays, she's got all the parts of her leg she needs to be normal. You've made my day already. <laughs> <laughs> when this kitten was born just a few days ago, everyone said, put it down. There's no reason for it to live. Yet she looked at them and said, no, I'm gonna make sure this kitten gets a chance. No, you may have saved her life. She clearly sees something in this kitten and sees some sort of hope. My job now is to try to turn that hope into a reality. Okay. Okay, chicken. Good girl. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is starting treatment on little Amari's badly deformed leg. So she may only be three days old, but what mm -hmm. she's going to get is a pretty intense physical workout. Kitten physio may sound a little strange, but it is exactly what Amari needs if she's going to be any chance of correcting the position of this leg. If Chris can't straighten the leg, the tiny Tonkinese kitten may never be able to walk properly. So, our first goal is to get that leg straight. Mm -hmm. So, if we straighten it out Pull there. it out. Okay, we let it go. At the root of this problem is the fact that the tendons that are actually meant to be loose enough to allow Amari's ankle to function normally, they're simply too tight. They're pulling that foot right back around. So we push to the point of resistance, which is mm -hmm. right there, and we just hold it there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Devoted owner Wendy will have to continue Amari's rigorous treatment at home. You're going to have to be a bit tough here too because she is going to scream. let out a few little screams. Yeah. Okay. But it's all for the best, darling. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of hard work, um, a lot of long hours, a lot of having to put up with a little poor little thing crying. But um, I know it's all going to be worth it in the end. So we're going to, in between the stretching, mm -hmm. put her into a splint. You may not be surprised to know that we don't make a lot of <laughs> kitten splints. <Really>? Yeah. <laughs> There's not a huge market for it. No, so it's going to be um, a makeshift type of... Homemade. While the idea of the physio is to try to loosen up those muscles and those tendons, the idea of the splints is to really lock it in position and then get the body used to that leg being in exactly that spot. See how she gets around. It's going to be tricky for her, but the hope is that she'll she'll actually have to move this leg through now. Yeah. And that'll build up her leg strength. Yeah, okay, but that, that's a really nice start for her now. From being told 24 hours ago that this kitten shouldn't be kept alive to now, within the last 20 minutes, actually seeing real progress, it's quite a transformation. Wendy's really been rewarded for her fate in this little girl. All right, okay. big question's going to be whether mum approves. Mm, yeah, she's fine with it. Yeah. Couldn't have thought of a better outcome, hey? She's got a really good chance. Yeah. You know, as a vet, sometimes you do wonder whether once they leave the clinic and go home, whether that work will actually be truly done. But with Wendy, knowing her connection to Amari, you know it's going to happen. And she is going to have to work hard if she is going to get the results she deserves with Amari. Been wondering how you've been going. Good. Come on through. Let's go. Come on, Isaac. Wendy and Isaac have brought their one week old kitten, Amari, back to the Bondi Clinic. It's been a couple of days since I've seen Amari, so I'm very keen to see just how she's coped with that splint. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Chris had to use a cotton bud as a makeshift splint on the tiny kitten's badly deformed leg. 
The unknown for me as I'm taking this splint off is how have her muscles and her tendons reacted to being put in what for them is an unnatural position. Yeah, look, the good news is that we're now more comfortable in that straight position. We've managed to correct that twist. Why don't we see if she can actually move around all by herself? Yeah. She's moving a lot better though. She is, yeah. See, the, the will is really there. This, this foot wants to come through. The final challenge for Amari's leg is to get into that right angled position with her feet upwards. That way her toes can actually grab the ground as she moves that leg forward and she might just walk like a normal cat. So, just like we did a few days ago, we're going to start with just a little bit of physio, just to get it comfortable. We've made really good progress in just a couple of days, but in many respects, we've had to. This is truly a race against time. We have to get her body used to this new leg position before she gets bigger, and her weight means more force is going through these legs. This time, we need something with a right angle. Okay. So, we're gonna use a specimen container. You're gonna get more creative for me. Yep. The next stage in Amari's treatment is a second splint. Just You'll see in a minute, mate. This time to get her paw in the correct position. Oh, I kind of understand it now. Yeah, you're getting it? Getting it. She's got a bit of a way to go mm -hmm. yet. She just has to get used to that leg position yep. and get the strength from that. But she's already lifting it up and she's already keen to move it through. And yeah. for her now, walking should actually become easier yeah. if she can handle this new position. Yeah. She's a fighter, a big time fighter, and she will continue to fight. I suppose she beckons you a nice little warm, warm bed, hey? We go and you go there. Hey, Amari. Well, Chris won't be long. Now you're going to have a look at those legs. Hey, we'll see how they're going. At the Bondi Clinic, Wendy and her children Isaac and Imogen have brought in Amari and a couple of her siblings. Oh, what a little splint you've had on. I hope it worked, hey? Little Amari is now six weeks old and it's time to see if there's any improvement in her badly twisted leg. Lots of physio, yeah. probably 20 times a day we've been doing stretches and um, with the splints and lots of screaming by her, but um, hopefully it's been all worth it. Now let's put them down. Okay. We bought a few others. As Wendy and the kids are walking in with the kittens, I'm thinking, Amari is just one kitten. Why are there three? I guess it's a really good thing that I can't actually pick which is which. <laughs> My challenge for Chris, well, I brought three kittens in today. They're all exactly the same colour, about the same size, and I want Chris to pick which one is a Murray. So they are pretty cold there. So if you look at that, he's actually a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a little bit warmer. That's not her? That's not her. Hey? It's you. Is it you, a Murray? You girl? Really? You really. But look on those back legs. She's a muscle, my girl. Look at that walking. My mind keeps on going back to that moment just a few weeks ago where I was confronted with a kitten with a badly twisted leg and not much hope of survival. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Wow, so which is almost says. able to bend it right up yeah. on itself there. That's what he said, isn't it, without crying too. She's a little powerhouse though, that, that's a, I'm actually pushing reasonably hard there. I knew from the moment I gave Wendy those instructions about what she had to do with Amari's leg that she'd find it hard and she'd find it confronting because she had to push past Amari's pain threshold. But looking at what she's done, I'm in awe. She's done a remarkable job. I think you've been through enough hurdles for a lifetime in the one. So you can just enjoy the rest of your life like you're enjoying this chin scratch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way any I would have been able to do this without your help. It's been absolutely tremendous and I can't thank you enough. No worries at all. Yeah. I did my bit, but you're the one that, that you know, stared down those people that said she should be put down and said, no, I'm going to give her a chance. So. Well, that's it. I'm a determined one. She was so, so cute. Like, there's no way I could do that to a cat. Yeah. Amari has really occupied a really special place in Wendy's heart. 
She's been so determined, so dogged, and has made sure that Amari has overcome massive obstacles to be here today. And now she's got a life with Amari to look forward to. Does your favourite vet have what it takes to be a star on Bondi Vet? We're looking for the best vets from around the globe to join our team. Let us know at bondivet.com and you could win an incredible once in a lifetime holiday to Bondi Beach. Stay in luxury accommodation overlooking the iconic beach and meet the stars of the series. To enter, tell us in 50 words or less why you think your vet should join the Bondi Vet team. Enter now at bondivet.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.